All the youth of England are on fire, and silken dallies in the wardrobe lies. Now bribe the armorers, and honor's thought reigns solely in the breast of every man. They sell the pasture now to buy the horse, following the mirror of all Christian kings, on winged hills as English mercuries. For now sits expectation in the air, and hide the sword from hilt unto the point with crowns imperial, crowns and coronets promised to Harry and his followers. The French, advised by good intelligence of this most dreadful preparation, shake in their fear and with pale policy seek to divert the English purposes. O oh, England, model to thy inward greatness, like a little body with a mighty heart, what might thou do that honor would thee do? Were all thy children kind and natural, but, see thy fault? France hath in thee found out a nest of hollow bosoms, which he fills with treacherous crowns, and three corrupted men, one, Richard Earl of Cambridge, and the second, Henry Lord Scroop of Masham, and the third, Sir Thomas Gray, Knight of Northumberland, have, for the guilt of France, ugh, oh, guilt indeed, confirmed conspiracy with fearful friends, and by their hands this grace of kings must die, if hell and treason hold their promises, ere he take ship for France and in Southampton. Linger your patience on. We'll digest the abuse of distance, force a play. The sum is paid. The traitors are agreed. The king is set from London, and our scene is now transported, gentles, to Southampton. For God is grace is bold to trust these traitors. They shall be apprehended by and by. How smooth and even they do bear themselves, as if allegiance in their bosom set, crowned with faith and constant loyalty. The king hath note of all that they intend by interception which they dream not of. Nay, but the man that was his bedfellow, whom he hath dulled and cloyed with gracious favors, that he should, for a foreign purse, sell his sovereign's life to death and treachery. Now sits the wind fair, and we will aboard. My lord of Cambridge, my kind lord of Masham, and you, my gentle knight, give me your thoughts. Think you not that the powers we bear with us will cut their forces through the force of France, doing the execution and the act for which we haven't had assembled them? No doubt, my liege, if each man do his best. I doubt not that, since we are well persuaded. We carry not a heart with us for man's that grows not in fair consent with ours, nor leave not one behind that does not wish success and conquest to attend on us. Never was a monarch better fear to love than is your majesty. There is not, I think, a subject who sits in heart grief and uneasiness under the sweet shade of your government. True, those that were your father's enemies have steeped their galls in honey and do serve you with hearts create of duty and of zeal. <laughs> We therefore have great cause of thankfulness, and shall forget the office of our head, sooner than quittance of desert and merit, according to the weight and worthiness. So serve us shall with steel and sinews toil. Labor shall refresh itself with hope to do your grace incessant services. We judge no less. <laughs> Uncle of Exeter, enlarge the man committed yesterday that railed against our person. We consider it was excess of wine that set him off, and on his more advice we parted. That's mercy, but too much security. Let him be punished, sovereign. This example breed by his sufferance more of such a kind. Oh, let us yet be merciful. So may your highness and yet punish too. Sir, you show him great mercy if you give him life after the taste of much corruption. <laughs> Alas, your too much love and care of me are heavy orisons against this poor wretch. If little faults proceeding on distemper shall not be winked at. How shall we stretch our eye when capital crimes, chewed, swallowed, and digested, appear before us? Will yet enlarge that man, though Cambridge, Scroop, and Gray, and their dear care and tender preservation of our person would have been punished? And now to our French causes. Who are the late commissioners? Uh, I won, my lord, you made me ask for today. So did you me, my lady. And I, my royal sovereign. Then, Richard, Earl of Cambridge, there he is. There is yours, Lord Scroop of Masham, and Sir Knight Grey of Northumberland. This same is yours. Read them, and know, I know your worthiness. My Lord of Westmoreland and Uncle Exeter, we will aboard tonight. Why, how now, gentlemen? What see you there that you lose so much complexion? Look ye how they change. Their, their cheeks are paper. Why? 
What read you there that has no power to chase your blood out of appearance? I do submit my fault and do submit me to your highness's mercy. <laughs> to, which to which we, we all, all appeal. appeal. <laughs> the mercy that was quickened us but late by your own counsel is suppressed and killed. We must not therefore shame to talk of mercy for your own reasons turn into your bosoms as dogs upon your masters were you. Look you, my princes, my noble lords, these English monsters. My lord of Cambridge here, you know how apt our love was to accord to furnish him with all appurtenance belonging to his honor. And this man has for a few light crowns lightly conspired and sworn unto the practices of France to kill us here in Hampton. To the which this knight, no less for bounty bound to us than Cambridge is, hath likewise sworn. Oh, what shall I say to thee, Lord Scrooge? Thou cruel, ingrateful, savage, and inhuman creature, thou that didst bear the key of all my counsels, that knewest the very bottom of my soul, that, that almost mightst have coined me into gold, which thou have practiced on me for thy use, is it possible that four and higher may out of thee extract one spark of evil that might annoy my finger? Is so strange that though the truth of it stands off as gross as black and white, my eye will scarcely see it. Oh, how hast thou jealousy infected the sweetness of happiness? Show me dutiful. Why so didst thou seem they grave and learned? Why so didst thou come they from noble families? Why so didst thou seem they religious? Why so didst thou? Or are they spare in diet, free from gross passions or mirth or anger, constant in spirit, not swerving with the blood, garnished, decked, modest compliment, not working with the eye without the ear, but in purged judgment, trusting neither. Such and so finely bolted didst thou seem, and thus thy fall hath left a kind of blot to mark the full fraught man best endued with some suspicion. I will weep for thee. For this revolt of thine, methinks, is like another fall of man. Their faults are open. Arrest them to the answer of the law, and God acquit them of their practices. I arrest thee of high treason by the name of Richard, Earl of Cambridge. I arrest thee of high treason by the name of Henry, Lord Scroop of Masham. I arrest thee of high treason by the name of Thomas Gray, Knight of Northumberland. Her purposes God justly hath discovered. And I repent my fault more than my death, which I beseech your highness to forgive, though my body pay the price of it. For me the gold of France do not seduce, although I did admit it as a motive the sooner to effect what I intended. But God be thanked for prevention which I in sufferance hardly would rejoice, beseeching God and you to pardon me. Never hath faithful subject more rejoiced at the discovery of most dangerous treason than I do, at this hour, joy over myself, prevented from most damned enterprise, my fault, but not my body, pardon, sovereign. God quit you in his mercy. Hear your sentence. You have conspired against our royal person, joined with an enemy proclaimed, and from his royal coffers received the golden earnest of our death, wherein you would have sold your king to slaughter, his princes and his peers to servitude, his subjects to oppression and contempt, and his whole kingdom to desolation. Touching our person, seek we no revenge. But we, our kingdom's safety, must so tender, whose ruin you have sought, that to our laws we do deliver you. Get you therefore hence, poor miserable wretches, to your death. The taste whereof God, in his mercy, give you patience to endure, and full repentance of all your dear offenses. Bear them heads. Now, my lords, for France, the expedition whereof shall be to you as us like glorious. I doubt not now of a fair and lucky war, for God so graciously hath brought to light this dangerous treason work lurking in our path. 
Not, not, not now, but every rub is smoothed on our way. Then forth, dear countrymen, let us put our puissance into the hand of God and put it straight in expedition. Cheerly to see the signs of war advance. No king of England, if not king of France.